Hello, in this video I'm going to go over a brief algebra review. I'm going to briefly cover some of the math skills that you need in order to be able to be successful in the course. First example is how to solve a linear equation. So we're given an equation that has a variable called x in this case and we have to get x by itself. So the first step is to get all the terms that have x on one side, all the terms that don't have x on the other side. So I'll go ahead and get the terms that have x, I'll get them to the right side. So in order to do that I need to subtract 4x from each side. That will get rid of this 4x over here. I'll be left with 12 on the left, 9x minus 4 on the right hand side. Now I can get all the terms that don't have x to the left side. So this negative 4, I have to add it to each side in order to get rid of it on the right side. This leaves me with 16 equals 9x. And finally, to get to x by itself, we can now divide by 9. Whenever the term is by itself, nothing is added or subtracted from the term. It's all by itself. If it was multiplied by a number, then you have to divide by that number in order to get it by itself. So this means that x is equal to 16 over 9. As a decimal, this is approximately 1.8. So just to recap, when you're getting the variable by itself, make sure to first either add or subtract terms in order to get terms that have x on one side and terms that don't have x on the other. Once you're done adding and subtracting, that's when you can either multiply or divide in order to get your variable by itself. Let's look at the second example, solving a quadratic equation. In this case, our unknown variable has a squared. So in, the easiest way to do this is to use the quadratic formula. In order to use it, we want to get all the terms on one side and set, set to have it set equal to 0. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So I will have 4.9t squared minus 30t plus 10 equals 0. I got rid of this negative 10 here. The reason we want to do that is because now this equation is in standard form. It has the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. This means that whatever coefficient, whatever number is in front of the square term, is 4.9 here, that is a. Whatever is in front of the linear term, the term that just has the x or t, whatever is in front there, that's b. And then the term that is just a number by itself, that's c. Now that we have gotten the variables a, b, and c from our equation, we can now plug them into the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula says negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It says that x or t, whatever your variable is, is going to be equal to this. So now we just have to plug in the numbers. So t is equal to negative negative 30. Those negatives will cancel out. Plus or minus the square root of negative 30 squared. Make sure to put that whole thing in parentheses. Minus 4 times 4.9 times 10. All of this is under the square root. And then the whole thing is divided by 2 times 4.9. When you plug all of this in your calculator, what you're going to get are two answers, one for the plus, one for the minus. You're going to get 0 0.35 and also negative 5.8. So in general you get two answers when you're solving a quadratic equation. When we're going to see this in our class, the t will usually stand for time, in which case you can completely disregard the negative answer and just keep the positive answer. Next example I'd like to do is solving a system of linear equations. 
This is where you have two equations and two unknowns. This will happen a lot in our class. There are two methods that I'd like to go over for solving these types of equations. The first method is the substitution method. In order to use this method, you solve for one variable in one equation and then you plug that variable into the other equation. So let's, for instance, let's solve for the x variable in the first equation here. That means we have to get x by itself. So we'll go ahead and add 3y to both sides. That will give us 2 plus 3y on the right hand side. It will get rid of this minus 3y here. And then we divide by 2 by both sides in order to get that x by itself. So x is equal to 2 plus 3y over 2. And just to make that a little prettier, let's just say if we divide 2 into each term here, that's 1 plus 1.5y. Now that we have solved for x, we can plug, this is x, we can plug it into our other equation, wherever we see x. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this equation here. 3y plus 5x, but now my x is going to be 1 plus 1.5y. And that's equal to 7. Now I need to get y by itself. First, I need to distribute the 5 to both terms here. That's how we're going to get the y by itself. So 5 times 1 is 5, then 5 times 1.5, 7.5 times y. That will equal 7. And then just like in a previous example, combine all the terms that have y on one side, the terms that don't have y on the other side. So 3 plus 7.5y, those numbers add, we get 10.5y, and then we subtract 5 from each equals 2. So this means that when we solve for y, we're going to divide both sides by 10.5, y equals 2 over 10.5. And if we plug that in the calculator, we get 0 0.19. If we leave it as a fraction, but without a decimal in the fraction, we can multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2 to get 4 over 21. The reason I'm writing this is because we don't want to round until the very end. 0 0.19 is a rounded answer. So I'm going to use the 4 over 21, that's an exact answer. I'm going to use that when I go ahead and solve for x. To solve for x, I need to plug this exact answer into my expression here for x. I'll write it over here on the side. We had x equals 1 plus 1.5y. 1 plus 1.5y. And then we plug in the 4 over 21 for the y x equals 1 plus 1.5 times 4 over 21. Now when we do this, the exact answer is going to be 9 over 7, but as a decimal, x will be 1.3. So we can round the final answer, so x is 1.3, y is 0 0.19. But when getting intermediate results to plug into other equations, you always want to use the exact answer so that you don't have rounding errors. I also want to do this example using the elimination method, just to remind you that there are different ways to solve these types of equations. The elimination method works particularly well for this example. So in order to use it, I'm going to rewrite the second equation, but I'm going to rearrange the terms so that the x term is in front. So 5x plus 3y equals 7. By doing this, we can see how the elimination method works. If we add the two equations together, 2x plus 5x is 7x, minus 3y plus 3y, those will cancel out. So this will equal 2 plus 7, which is 9. This gives us a quick, quick way to solve for x, which will be 9 over 7, same answer that we found previously. Now that we have found x, now we do need to go ahead and use the substitution method 
one more time in order to be able to solve for y. So we can plug in this x value into either of the two equations to solve for y. So let's put it in the second equation. We have 3y plus 5, but I'm going to plug in 9 over 7 for the x equals 7. And then let's see what happens. We get 3y equals 7 minus all of this, which is 45 over 7. Plug all of this in the calculator and then divide all of this by 3. And you'll end up getting the exact same answer that we got before for y, which is 4 over 21. So the elimination is a little bit faster if you can see that terms easily cancel out when you add or subtract the two equations together. That's it for this video. The next video will go over some brief trigonometry review.